Good morning. It is Tuesday, October 29th, 2024. October is just about done and will be coming up on November before you know it. It is a partly cloudy day today, although it's going to be sunny for a while. Uh, there is a promise of rain in the future, and I certainly hope that's true. We are very dry, and we could use the rain. Just a few announcements for the day. Reminder to our confirmation classes of class tomorrow night. That's at 7 o'clock at St. Paul's. Worship services this coming Sunday, the 3rd of November, will be 8.30 at St. Paul's, 10.30 at 1st. Both services will have Holy Communion, and both services will be live-streamed. Also, this coming Sunday, we are commemorating the saints who have died in the past year. We lift them up before the Lord as they have joined the church triumphant. We are adding something new this year. We are going to have uh, also an opportunity for those who want to remember other folk who may not belong to St. Paul's or to First, who have died in the past year, to light a candle in their memory. Uh, we encourage them to bring a picture, if they could, to put it up on a bulletin board along with a candle. And it is a way of remembering those who have gone before us. And also, if you would just simply like to light a candle in memory of or in prayer for someone, uh, that will be perfectly fine as well. Again, that's something new we're trying this year, and I'm sure it will be refined as we go forward. I think those are the announcements I'm going to touch on for today. This past Saturday, I had the privilege of presiding at Andy Tyne's wedding in Independence, Iowa. Andy is the son of Dale and Sarah Tyne, and Andy was a lifelong member of St. Paul's until he moved to Independence, and now he is a member at Emmanuel Lutheran there. Emmanuel currently was without a pastor, and because of that, Andy asked me if I would preside at his wedding, and I was happy to do so. I rejoice that he and Cassidy have begun their life together as husband and wife and pray going forward that they continue to be a living witness to Christ. A couple of things I noticed in the sanctuary at Emmanuel um, was first of all the screens. Uh, there was a giant screen uh, over the uh, altarpiece and which could be lowered and raised accordingly and then there were screens in front that the pastor could read off of. And off to the side there was a space for what was obviously a praise band. And I'm going to be perfectly honest, I am not a fan of praise bands. Or, or of praise music for that matter. Uh, if anything, I consider um, Lutheran worship to be somewhat spare because I, I would prefer uh, Eastern Orthodox worship, which is sometimes two to three hours long. Uh, but that's a whole other comment. The thing that disturbs me about um, praise bands and screens in church is worship shapes us. And how we worship is important, and it is not to be done lightly. There is an old phrase that goes something like this, lex orende, lex credende, which means the way in which you pray or worship shapes your faith. The law of prayer is the law of faith. And some add to this lex vivende, which the law of prayer is the law of faith, is the law of life. Or how you pray, how you worship shapes your faith, which shapes your daily life. And I genuinely believe that to be the truth. Our worship shapes us, and how we worship and what we do in worship is not accidental, nor is it unimportant. Some will argue that we Lutherans do the same thing every week, and there's truth to that. We do the liturgy, and we don't vary a great deal. Occasionally we will do that. But we do the liturgy as has been set down by the church over the generations, because we find those parts of the liturgy to be important. We come to worship confessing our sins. We make confession and receive absolution. And in the Kyrie, we sing to God to have mercy on us, to forgive and to be merciful to us as sinners. We offer our prayer for the day, for the things necessary for that day. We hear the word read in scriptures, Old Testament, Psalm text, New Testament, and Gospel. We sing the hymns of the church as ways in which we prepare and nurture our faith, an expression of prayer in song. We hear the gospel proclaimed in a sermon, and I do hope and pray that the gospel is always heard, 
not some personal opinion of the preacher or some trendy thing that they may have seen online, but rather the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And then we celebrate the Holy Sacraments, <clears throat> the Sacrament of Holy Baptism, the Sacrament of the Lord's Supper, these sacraments, which are acts of God, which draw us into the faith, nurture and sustain us in the faith. And then we offer our prayers for the church and for the world, and then are blessed to go out into the world to share our faith. I think that's important. I think it's essential. Um, I don't care for experimentation from week to week, because once we start making the worship service about what we do, about the things that we innovate, we begin to lose focus on who we are worshiping and why we are worshiping. It is very true. The way we pray, the way we worship, affects our faith. And our faith, if healthy and nurtured by worship, by word and sacrament, guides and directs our lives. These things are important and essential. That's not to say that a praise man can't be useful, that screens can't be useful, that other innovations in worship can't be useful. But I think they must be done in the light of whether or not this is nurturing faith or providing entertainment for the congregation. The congregation is not there to be entertained. The congregation is there to worship. Remind you that the word liturgy, the form that we follow, literally means the work of the people. We come to do the work of worship. And I hope and pray that we can. And I hope and pray that we always will. And that if we make any changes or innovations in worship, that we do so thoughtfully and carefully, so that what we do is going to point us to Christ and deepen and mature the faith that has been given to us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all your grace and mercy that is showered upon us. Help us to worship Help us to offer praise to you in a way that is a blessing, not only to our own faith, but to the faith of those around us, so that we might serve you in the world, we might be equipped and strengthened for ministry. We continue to lift Marianne McMillan before you, asking for healing in her life. We pray for Joyce Segele and the death of her sister, and we ask that you give us the reins that we need for the land. Go with us into this day, Lord, that we might serve you and our neighbor. We ask it all in your name. Amen. Well, I look forward to seeing you all again tomorrow. I hope you have a very good rest of the day. And until then, goodbye now.